Okay, so welcome everyone um, to the Shiny Book Club, Mastering Shiny Book Club, where we study Shiny and uh, discuss the chapter of Mastering Shiny Book. Um, today's chapter is chapter three, basic reactivity. Um, and I will try to, uh, I didn't prepare it uh, for the for this chapter, but I already read it. So we will go to through the the slides together and see, uh, discuss more about reactivity and what do you think about reactive programming in general, uh, and how we could understand it better because, uh, sometimes in the book it's uh, it's a little bit like um, very verbose. So uh, it could be some people could like this way of uh, of explaining things and some others don't. So. We'll see. Um, so, yeah. So the learning objective of this chapter is explain in more detail how to input and output argument works and differentiate between imperative and declarative programming, describe the basics of reactivity. Uh, inputs are directly connected to outputs. We'll see that how in the coming, in the coming slides. And apply reactive expression to eliminate duplicate code. Um, we already like uh, take a take uh, have taken a glance of uh, information about reactivity uh, in the first chapter when we started to build our first app. Uh, but here we will try to go deeper into the basic component in reactive programming, and uh, in in later chapters uh, we will dive deeper into how everything is going uh, or connected together behind the scene. Um, so yeah, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So, as a recap, in our scripting, we we do some, some something called sequential logic or sequential um, running of code, where we we have the code as this page from top to bottom, and uh, it read it from top to bottom uh, when we run the, the, the R script. So uh, that's a normal R scripting. Uh, in reactive programming, it's, it's uh, the, the running behavior is, is very different because it's had its, uh, uh, yeah, it has its graph of dependencies, which is what, what we call it reactive graph. Uh, and it's built on, like it's built on the defining the front end part and back end part, the input and the outputs, and how it's connected to each other. That's how the reactive graph is uh, constructed, and we'll see how. Um, so so far we le we learned that the front end is a UI object that contains the HTML presented in every user for the app is symbol for every user to get the same HTML. And the back end is a server object. Uh, this is more complicated because every user needs to get an independent version of the app. When a user A modifies an input field, user B shouldn't see their output change. So it takes it talks about the um, the connection between the output and the uh, and the input, uh, it, uh, the input the, the output should be in uh, should be in independent, um, of on the of the input, but the imp uh, the input should be dependent on the output, um. So. It creates a new environment for each run, giving each session to have a unique state. If you see this uh, this graph or this. Try to okay. Yeah, so we have a, a UI and uh, which is here is fluid page, uh, the functions of layout that we talked about before. And it just gets translated to HTML, same HTML. Um we could have like multiple server functions 
uh, for every user or oh yeah, same function, but for each user. So it's sequentially, it's handling like multiple users at the same time. For every session, it's a new server function. That, that's what he talked about, he talking about. That for every new user, uh, the, his, he, he has its own session, which based on its own browser, because we are working well in the inside the browser itself. Um, of, of, of course, in the browser itself has uh, an HTML that get generated from the UI. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we talked about here. And okay, let's go to the next one. So a deeper, yeah, a deeper dive into the server function. Uh, we already know that this is the way we write server function for a, in by in in shiny for R, uh, and the it's it's a function that have an argument input and output and session, and we said that before that we will talk about more about um, the arguments itself. So at first, the first argument is input, which is list like object uh, that contains a. Um, it's used for receiving inputs, uh, which is the sent or the already sent that data from the browser. So if you're having, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, a user a, a text input like this one, uh, this is saying to the browser, if uh, if I write here anything, uh, please send it to um, send send it to the browser, and the browser should uh, like it's a request response cycle, which uh, where uh, I request uh, a data and I get a response back. So in the request itself, we giving it the input, I think we take the input ID and uh, the browser itself giving back, giving us back the, the output, which is um, uh, it's a text output here. Um, and this is handled behind the scene in the server function. All of this are hand handled handled uh, automatically by Shiny. Um, so yeah, uh, also the input is read only, so we can change uh, the input. For example, if we go to the server function and said that this input, uh, let's try to see if it. Uh, Okay. This is working. Yeah. So if you if we said that um in this in the in the server function we, we said that the input is um this name. Okay, name. Sorry if I'm because I'm writing with mouse, so it's very bad. Um, but yeah, the, this input, if I uh, assign it to a variable, uh, a value um, like this, uh, and it's, it's a text variable called text, for example. Okay. Now, this will get an error. Why? Because it's read-only uh, object where you couldn't, you, you can't do that. Um, so that's what he, he talked about here. Let's see. Yeah, this is a read only where we, where we can't like assign it to the variable because it's a read only object. Um, so must be read on in a reactive context. So this reactive context thing is uh, it, it's a bit like it's an environment where the reactivity works and Otherwise, it doesn't that anything that already reactive it doesn't work. So the context itself is uh, is built in anything that using reactive behind the scene. And the render text and reactive, which is a reactive expression, is using this reactive context. That's why if you use if you have an like a normal function in R and did this input um, like this input name 
inside it, inside the normal function, it will not work because it's not a reactive context. Um, so it should be in the reactive context, which means it should be in some of the functions that's using reactive in the behind the scene. And every output function is using this reactive behind the scene, reactivity behind the scene. So render text, render plot, render table, uh, anything that we output into the screen from the server is getting like um, um, uh, like it's it works. It's getting this reactive context, um, and the same for reactive. Reactive is a, it's, it's a, like a very specific function that uh, enforces reactivity. It's it's like I'm I'm saying to shiny do this as a as an intermediate value before connecting the input to the output. So it's an intermediate step. Uh, so I'm enforcing reactivity with this intermediate step. Um, otherwise, you will get an error. Okay, so this is an input. Now the output, the output uh, is also a list-like object uh, used for sending output. It's always used with render functions, set up the reactive context and renders in the HTML that we talked about, um, where um, uh, it's that the output itself is uh, is having this render re reactive context if it's if you if you used some of the render functions that we talked about before um yeah okay so this is the input and the output in the book in this chapter we said that session we talked about but it's in later chapter we we, we didn't talk about session yet just yet um so we will wait until our later chapter to discuss session um yeah. Okay. So yeah, the reactive programming. So the meaning of reactive programming, um, I think it's a mental model. Uh, so it's uh, it's something that uh, you, it's how you perceive it and how you understand it. People understand it differently. So we'll we'll just read the the slide and then discuss what you what you guys saying about reactive. Uh, since you are you already read, read the chapter, so uh, just to have like, some conversation um, about how we could understand the active program. So the active programming is an elegant and powerful programming paradigm, but it can be disorienting at first because it's a very different paradigm to writing a script. This is Hadley Wickham, the author of the book. So uh, it said also that's a mental model, still versus in form, Providing Shiny with recipes, not giving it commands. Yeah, and recipes, um, it just saying, uh, yeah, uh, recipes, recipes, not command. And uh, it's talked about how we could understand it from our point of view. And uh, how, what is the difference between the imperative and declarative programming? I think of the imper imperative programming is, um, is you describe the how in how you 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 build how you build stuff like it's you describing how in specific details but in the declarative way you just uh, describe the what what you are building and you don't care how it's built or it's it's already built for you in in the shiny use case it's already built for you so you just need to focus on the how, the, not the how, sorry, the, the what, uh, what you could build with with a simple construct in Shiny. Um, so yeah, the key differences between two important styles of programming is imperative programming and declarative. So, the, the imperative programming is issue a specific command and it's carried out immediately. So just really normal programming where we have code, uh, code command commands that um, executed one by one. It's normal uh, program uh, describing how. Now, uh, the declarative programming is express express a higher level goals or describe important constraints and rely and rely on someone else to decide how and or when to translate it into the action into action. So. We taking the the details 
and ship it or package it, package it uh, for someone else to do for us. Uh, and this someone else is shiny behind the scene in the back end. Um, so imperative code is assertive and declarative code is passive aggressive. And it, like it's uh, it's two different uh, like thinking models or more, more. Uh, model uh, that you could think about it as uh, make me a sandwich versus ensure there is a sandwich in the refrigerator um, whenever I look inside of it. So make me a sandwich is just, just on a command, do that, uh, paste some data out, um, print out some data or do like this expression, um, give me the statistics of, of, of summary statistics of this uh, data frame, something like that. So it's, uh, it's like very strict commands versus ensuring that there is something that you could, uh, you describe uh, like what you could build without going into the details. This is actually pretty inter interesting because this is built also in SQL. If you, if you tried SQL before, it's it's like it's a declarative programming way of doing things. Um and that's why it's very easy and convenient for everyone to use. And also the the learning curve, it's learning curve is very uh very low. So in essence, you describe your overall goals and the software figures out how to achieve them without further intervention. Um yeah. So let's talk about the laziness. So it uh yeah before before we go to the laziness and other stuff, I said that we could have a conversation about the reactive programming. So do you guys what do you guys think about reactive programming after you read it just reading the chapter? Um how you understand it in Shine? Actually, Ahmed, I, I just want to go back to your earlier comment about uh, like SQL, um, and, and I've also heard that being referenced as a declarative language in, in the past, but I, I think there's a, a bit of a difference in, in terms of how Pavley describes imperative and, and, and declarative, right? Because in, in SQL, you're still kind of getting the job done immediately as opposed to waiting for something else to happen, right? Um, I think that's the key difference. Um, um, uh, the response to that, I think, is uh, the 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 this this uh, select statement that we do our create statement or any other SQL construct. Uh, it's already triggering behind the scene what uh, um, a lot of code that do a lot of stuff together in the SQL engine behind the scene. So that's why they. They, they describe it as a declarative. Um, that's right. Why, okay. Exactly. You're not telling it explicitly how to how to get the, you know what you want. You're just saying what you want. Yes. Um, but but again, just trying to tie it back to this chapter, it's still imperative in the sense that you're saying I want it now. You're not <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, getting yeah. it returned immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got you. That, yeah. That's the only distinction. It's, yep. Um, so do you have any like ideas of how you got you could understand the reactive programming in shiny? Uh, just my my general uh, feedback on this, you know, I'm still relatively new uh, yeah. is that you know the point that you brought up earlier about the order not being, uh uh necessary i guess you could describe it right you could you can kind of put um scripts that lines uh in in orders that wouldn't make sense to humans right um yeah top to bottom and it still works um and i thought there was an interesting example in the book about where that was happening i think you were defining either a function or a variable after it was being called in an earlier line and so um, that will take some getting used to. Um, I, th I think Hadley had kind of a point in there, even though this works, 
<laughs> where things are kind of out of order. Like for if you want your scripts to be human readable, you still probably want to have that top to bottom feel. Uh, yeah. Right to how you're designing your your shiny shiny up. Yeah, actually, we will touch on this about the laziness part, which is that what exactly you are described, where um, the code is not triggered Im immediately, so it's triggered uh, like when when it like show some uh, like observe some changes in the in the UI. Um, so yeah, um, I, anyone else have like like um introspective or something about to, to say about the active programming yeah i just wanted to add that the example uh, is about a refrigerator and i think that metaphorical refrigerator is the output container that whenever that container has something to show then it would show up otherwise if uh input is not changed nothing will be changed in that container yeah exactly yeah i i think of it as um as something like a watcher or something like an observer or something that observe every change in the page and it does the two things um it doesn't like react immediately it just wait Till till uh, like it, it observe or see any changes in the UI, then it triggers this action. But not only trigger it, it's also caching this information that we're doing it from like um, the reactive way or um, or in the server side to to not let it execute that every time we're running the app. So without any changes happening, uh, it, it's still uh, stored in somewhere or observed so or uh, like persisted somewhere. That's that's what we talk about when we talk about laziness and the, and, uh, the order and execution order and the stuff. Um, so yeah, um, we could go to the next slide. So let's see. Just a quick point. I think this is also something that's missing in the other app frameworks like Streamlit. Uh, I heard a talk where they compare Shiny with Streamlit, and the presenter says that uh, that reactive programming is the main strength because Streamlit runs everything from top to bottom, even if you change just one input control. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. The Streamlit is like is um, for every change like just roll, low, reload everything. Uh, it's like a, a refreshing, refresh everything. And this is can be compute, compute, computationally exhausted, uh, exhausting for uh, the machine uh, because we do, we, we do stuff uh, over and over again without the need to. Uh, and that's why as we talked about instructor one that it's this caching mechanism is one of the strengths and differentiator uh, of uh, of Shiny than other frameworks like Streamlit. And of course, Streamlit is Python um, framework for also like uh, creating their like very quick, simply active uh, application, web application uh, uh, based on data, of course. Um, but yeah, yeah, thanks for your, uh, like your, this information, I, I think it's, yeah, it's important to know the strengths of Shiny when we learn it because eventually we'll come like compare other framework with Shiny uh, in your journey to learn Shiny. So it's important it's important to point out this uh, differences differences. Uh, so yeah, uh, the laziness. Okay, so it's it allows apps to be extremely lazy. Uh, Shiny aims to do only do the work that it needs it. Uh, it only update output. As we talked about, only update updates that you can currently see. Uh, with this app works. Uh, caution if you are working on Shiny app and you just figure out why your code never gets run. Double check that you are. In, yeah, yeah. So uh, as you see here, um, this this nice day output uh, is just. Uh, 
like a simple like uh there's an email sync and that's that's drive out the connection so it's uh, it's like um uh breaking the connection so there is a night there is an output okay and it's a it's it should work but if there is an input um uh sorry if it, if there is an a receiver for this output in the ui with the same name so since it's not uh the same name exactly so this is very important to have the same exact name uh it will not uh it, it will not work um so yeah, yeah check double checking the identifier it's a good it's always a good practice um yeah i had a question about uh seeing the output so if we have a dab set in shiny app uh, and we are in one tab uh, the output in the other tab is not being seen by us. So does that mean that the uh, th there will be no code run for that particular output unless we switch to that tab? Um, no, I think it's uh, what, what we talked about seeing is it's, it's like displaying, not like just uh, not not us actively opening the app in front of us. Uh, I think it's this. It's, it's uh, it should work if you have multiple tabs at the same uh, time. It just displayed in the screen. It just opened uh, by the browser, so it get displayed into the browser um, immediately by 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 Shiny. So uh, it doesn't have to see or active actively select it as a screen like this one. Uh, if I open in the Shiny app in another tab, and it's on another screen and I didn't focus on it, it should also work. Um uh, yeah. Uh so seeing seeing here is not like actively or selectively or focusing on this uh screen as a as a one thing. Um yeah. Hope that uh clarifies us. Right. Okay, so yeah, the reactive graph. So, okay, so understanding the order of execution code is only run when needed. So Shiny behind the scene is, cre is creating this what's what's called a reactive graph. And it enforces that if you want to, to really, really understand what's happening behind the scene in your Shiny application, really to understand how everything is connected together, you should like draw this reactive graph, like by hand or by anything. Um, so it's a graph that describes how inputs and outputs are connected. Um, and it's a di it's co you can call it the diagram that identifies the reactive dependencies. And this reactive dependency is between the input and outputs, of course. Um, describes this relation. Output has a reactive dependency on a, on an input. So this name, okay, this name, um, Input have a re have a reactive dependency on the greeting, um. So, the greeting I think yeah greeting is the output I think yeah um where is it I think the code this greeting is yeah greeting is the output and name is the input, so the output which is the greeting has a reactive dependency on this uh input which is name, uh a reactive and you could think of it as this, um. This picture where it's like um, a pipe piping or puzzles together where is the input and the output and the intermediate calculation which is i talked about which is reactive expression is uh between them it could be existed it could be not existed um so we've seen we have seen that you could have like uh normal shiny apps without reactivity re reactive expressions um uh, so we could have input and output that connected together without any this reactive. But since we are talking about reactiv reactivity, so there there is why uh he yeah, he mentioned it here. Um so a reactive graph is a powerful tool for understanding how your apps works. Uh and make it by hand. Uh there is a function called uh, package package called diagram R uh to make it manually uh yourself 
could use it. Or you could use a package which is called React log. Let's open it. Uh, I think uh, it shows this reactive dependencies uh, as this, uh, which is very cool. Uh, I think uh, if you know the output, the input, and what other steps are being calculated or executed uh, in your apps, now you could like optimize it, see where where could be the the issues in your app, how we could like uh, like really debugging your app. Uh, with this uh, uh, React log uh, diagrams. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't describe in the book how you could use it, but I think it's the one command that um, that you could use. I think it's shiny React log show, this one. I think it's, uh, and it's, of course, we have a demo here. Uh, let's see if it's working. Yeah. This is a very complicated app, I think. So we would see that the uh, first line is uh, the input and second line is the reactive part. It could be multiple part, multi like not multiple level part. And at the end, it's the output where it's connected. Um, yeah. So let's go back to the... So yeah, you could use this reactive react log package to do it do it automatically. Uh, we will talk about it more in the later chapters. Um, yeah. So reactive exp expression, as I said before, uh, it's it's a tool to reduce duplication in your reactive code by introducing an additional nodes into the reactive graph, like an intermediate step to build uh, to building apps. But you are actively are um, design it actively to like to do to make it do your uh, your reactive work. Um, we will go. We'll get this uh, uh, after I think uh, it, the the app we use it uh, in the app itself. So um, the reactive it's used that's what this way. Um, it's, of course, it's your active expression. Uh, it's based. Uh, we said that okay, this is string. Call uh, call the reactive expression on this based function that have the input and the uh, the hello, um, hello string, uh, and the input name. Of course, that get uh, like get it from the input uh, UI, um, and you see here that. We are using here the the uh, the reactive. Um, yeah, um, this works because we are using the active, which is introduce the reactive context that that we talked about, and so introducing the reactive context is by using this reactive or this render any type of render function. Uh, so when we call the string function inside the render text. It already in the the, in the the reactive context uh, environment, so it it will run smoothly. Um, so if you go to the graph, you will see that there is a name and then a string, then as a greeting. The name is the input, and the string is the reactive intermediate step that get calculated, which is this one, and the greeting, which is the receiving part. At the end of the graph, uh, is what is when we call this reactive expression. In other words, reactive make apps cleaner and more efficient. Of course, if you if you think if, uh, of it as a a, a pre-processing function that you are using over and over again, so instead of just repeat it everywhere, uh, you could design it as a function. You could think of reactive as a function. Of course, it's had very different because a function is uh, it returns values and it it uh, um, it executed sequentially. But reactive it only executed when a change happened in the input uh, uh, in the input UI. So this reactive expression or this based uh, statement is executed only when a change happened in the input name. Uh, in the UI. 
um yeah and also to eliminate duplication because we we define it in the strap so as a function and we could have multiple outputs with different things and use it inside every output uh, as we like. Uh, but here the, the the main strength is that it caches its value. So this is being cached in Shiny. So in the next run, it will still remember um, the values and it will not execute it again until like a change happen in the UI then tree executed. Um, so it also simplifies reactive graph. Reactive expression has a flavor of both inputs and outputs. Uh, out outputs, um, you can use the results of reactive expression in, in an output, like outputs, uh, reactive expression depends on inputs and automatically know when they need updating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as we just said, um, it's an intermediate steps. Um, so it has, this flavor of input and output, same same like functionality, but um, it's an it's an intermediate step. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the different like, yeah, I think the, you will talk about here, the producers and consumers paradigm, which is it's like producers to refer to reactive inputs, which is the inputs, uh, and expressions. And the consumers is referred to the reactive outputs and the expressions and reactive expressions. So this is diagram is say it all like it's, there is an input and expression reactive expression which is called the producers and the the output and and the expression is called the consumers. So input is produced data to to the output, and output it consumes this data in the server. So input is produced data in the browser and output in the server side or in the machine is consuming this data uh, um, uh, that's coming from the input. Um, okay, let's see what else. Execution order, yeah. So here we talked about, he talked about the, ex the order of executing. I think this is uh, what we were referring to. Determined solely by the reactive graph and not the order of lines of code layout or layout in the server function, unlike normal R scripts. So uh, this output it doesn't uh, it doesn't executed uh, before this. Actually, none of them like um, both of them does not execute. Um, until there is a change in the input's name. So since this render text is dependent on this reactor, which is this greeting, is dependent on this string uh, reactive expression. So it will not get executed unless it, there's a, there is a change in the input name. So uh, both of them will not get executed until this change. And if there is a change, uh, this function will get executed first, and then the output will receive this value from here and render it as a text uh, on the screen. So that's why that's that's it. The order execu execution is different from normal R scripts. Um, yeah. Controls. So controlling controlling timing and uh, of evaluation. Um, so different flavor of reactive reactivity is using different functionality. Um, like every reactive function have its own usage, uh, in, uh, in shiny. So reactive as said, as we said, it's a, a intermediate calculation. Um, and, um, it's a reactive expression that's used for intermediate calculation. Um, and creating dependency between the input and output actively. Uh, now, we are using the active timer where we set a timer and after this seconds are being passed, this reactive ex uh, expression is, um, uh, is uh, executed. So we're just delaying the execution of the reactive expression. 
using this reactive timer function. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, this is the timer. If you get, if you if you show if you see this uh, graph, this is a timer, and we have lambda one and n and lambda two. Uh, the timer said that if uh, wait, the informs this three actives to wait. Uh, if even if it's if so, this is the input lambda one and n and uh, lambda two. I think it's here. Yeah, it's not here. Okay. Um, so lambda one and n and lambda two is the inputs. So if any change happened in, to this input, we see that they, they connected. Uh, this lambda one is connected to x one, n is connected to x one, and n also is connected to x two, and lambda is connected to x two. Um, the timer will say, okay, after the change happened in the lambda or lambda one or lambda two or n, uh, just wait until uh, five hundred second is passed. Then execute the three active uh, functions, which is x1 and x2. So uh, if you tried it in the in your browser, it will see that um, each, if you change this text input, for example, uh, this is what's called lambda, um, it will, will uh, wait 500, 500 seconds and then react to it with a histogram at the end. Um, so yeah. Okay, how using the action bottom and reactive and event reactive. I don't know if it's uh, if you have. Um, let's see. I I will try to open like the R Studio and try this code with you. Um, but until it. See. I will leave it start working and come back to it. Um, yeah, I, I will try to try stuff uh, before we, we end in this session. Uh, okay, let's try it again. Okay, so yeah. The action button and reactive event, yeah, event reactive. So UI execute to save space, but it con uh, contains the uh, the action button input. Here we are having a different kind of functions, uh, different flavor of reactivity, reactive functions. Uh, so this reactive expression function, which is event reactive, it said that if you pressed or clicked this button, which is called input simulate, then uh, calculate uh, this function. Okay, now, and this function, of course, uh, is a is a reactive um, function, I think. Uh, but yeah, the we are connecting the reactivity to an event. This is what's called before uh, is event driven development, where we having this uh, a kind of event. And we attach it with an action. So if this uh, if this event happened, which is scrolling or scrolling the wheel of like um, uh, the screen, or um, uh, clicking the button or clicking on the page, anything, any event that in JavaScript event, like for example, um, uh, do this action. So the same. Same way we did this, did this in, in Shiny, where we attach an event, which is a button, and the clicking of any anything that clicks this button will trigger the reactive execution to uh, of of uh, of a function to with to continue proceeding or proceeding execution. Um, so yeah, if if you have a, like a button and you you press a button, like anything anything the UI changes, it it doesn't change until um, you like you you have a text have a template and you change something, nothing will happen until you press this button. So the button will actually stop the execution until it's uh, it's get clicked. Um, yeah, I will. I will try to show it to you uh, at the end if we have time. 
um, trying to open like our studio about something happening in Ontario. Um, yeah, this is a reactive graph. Um, this is the diagram. We said that don't care about the inputs. That's what react event reactive they say. Don't care about the inputs. And if only and only if this simulate button or simulate input button, which is because it's it's considered an input uh, construct, uh, which is the action button here. Um, so if this button is clicked, then execute what x1 is doing, which is here uh, is this functionality that's depending on n and lambda. So achieve this uh, connection that we say we, we have seen in others uh, in, in this diagram. Achieve this connection only when I when I click the simulate button. Um, yeah. Uh, hope, I hope that it was clear. Uh, it will become more clear if I, when I when we try it in this code. Okay. So let's talk about the observers. Another kind of reactive uh, expressions. When you when might you use an observer? Yeah, like when it when you could use it. Uh, anytime you need to to make a call out of the application, saving a file, sending data to an API, and updating a database, printing a debugging message, all of that call uh, is is it's called like you are. Um, doing something um, in the back scene, for example, like in in the back side, or not like not directly attached to your application. So you're not like uh, showing a plot or not showing it a table or doing a calculation, simple calculation. No, you are doing other stuff that really uh, doesn't, didn't like, attached or um, connected to shiny ecosystem which is saving a file it doesn't have to not to know to to, to use shiny to, to to save a file to, to your shared drive sending and data into an API, an api this is not nothing have to be to do with shiny uh updating a database again printing a debugging message same so anything that doesn't connect it directly to um shiny you could use it, these observers, to uh, like trigger the reactive construct, or I would say watch for changes in these kind of actions. So watch if if a, if uh, in the, if the saving if you save the file again, watch if the data is changed in the API. Watch for an up updating any update happens at the, in the database. So you are watching the outer actions by using these observers. Um, so observers don't affect how the app looks. Again, um, you say here, uh, observers external world, print out console, update the database, write the data to a file, interact with an API, and then go to uh, the output at the end to see the result. Uh, there are two important differences between observe event and uh and the event reactive um so you don't can't assign the result of observe event to a variable so let's see so you can't refer to it from other reactive consumer yeah this is a very important difference so what is saying is this ob observe event it doesn't return a value so you can't assign it to a variable um for some cases uh you will need the reactive value or, or a value to get returned that dependent on the action so if it, if i if i press that button return this value to me to up to so i can use it somewhere else now this could happen with an event reactive but it will not happen in the observe event why? Because observe event is acting uh, on the side effect. So basically what it's saying is that if I did an action, 
do this and nothing else. If I did this change in the print, printing a console, updating a database or anything else, uh, just do this action and doesn't do, do not return anything else. Um, so yeah, this is a different the key difference. Uh, and again, we will talk more about the differences um, as we go through the uh, the deeper look on reactive programming in the last uh, the last chapters. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's see if I can open the R studio. Do anyone have any like comments about today's session, or do you know do you do you, uh, do you understand uh, even like have questions regarding this reactive uh, expressions, reactive knowledge. I know it's uh, a bit like uh, challenging to understand at first, but when you like trying the apps and seeing it, uh, seeing its result, you will see the differences yourself and try to adjust the concept with the difference, uh, the, 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 the function itself with the difference. So the active expression, the reactive, the, the observed event, event, uh, event reactive. And um, yeah, what else? Uh, I think it's called uh, timer, reactive climber, I think. So yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you, Ahmed, for walking us through this. Like, I, I'm guessing like others in this group, I had an idea what reactivity means, but never really thought about what it meant for like memory allocation or speed. So it's good to think about that as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ahmed. I, I think I, I got a lot of insight into reactivity more with this session. And I think that will be added to the knowledge that I have about it. So thank you so much. Thanks for you. Thank you. Um, so still, still like uh, it's opened. I think we have we have a couple of minutes. Um, let's go through the differences between the by shiny and uh, like the by shiny of reactive things and uh, our our shiny. Since we said that we will try to 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 ask to see the similarities, so. By shiny, Let's see. Okay, this one. I can't remember if uh, it's where is it? I think it's oh yeah 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 I am being alert. It's called at the end. Yeah, shiny for R. Similarities comparison, yes, yes. Where is it? It's something is somewhere here. Uh, there's a dictionary, reactive programming, yeah. Okay, where is the table? I think there is a table. Okay. Yeah, this one, this is a table that I'm talking about. So this is the R function and equivalent Python function. Uh, so for for people that want to use this in PyShiny as well. So the observe event is uh, is translated in PyShiny to the reactive.effect. So this renaming is happening because both the team are decide, see that observe event, reactive event, you see that it's the same like name, like uh, it's a very similar name with without verbose way of naming it, naming them uh, for describing this the, the usage of them. So they try they try to rename it based on its uh, its effect or its um, its action. So the observe event that we talked about before, it's depending on the side effect, as we said. So uh, this action is just if something change, do this action. This just th that's it. 
and didn't don't do not return anything or do uh, or or something so just do this action um, without interacting with anything else so this is observe event and it's called reactive dot effect uh, which is a decorator and the decorator is uh, something that like a pipeline or piping uh, functionality on top of each other uh, in Python. So you said that reactive dot effect, and you could also after it say the active dot calc, um, and you could I could see what uh, like uh, show you some examples. Now reactive is a reactive expression. Here it's called reactive dot calc, which calculation, as we said before, reactive is as intermediate calculation that happened behind uh, uh, as an intermediate step. The active expression is happening before the input, uh, before the output and after the input. So it's an intermediate steps, step or steps, multi maybe multiple level steps. Uh, so you could like have a uh, like a reactive that uses our reactive and that's it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, the bind event, is, we, not, we, we didn't talk about this yet. Uh, it's a reactive event where, yeah, and the active event is using the reactive calc and the reactive event where you return a value uh, and calc, where reactive calc is returning a value and reactive event is uh, doing this effect size or event size or event thing when is attached to uh, a button or something. Um, so yeah, I, I encourage you to to see this equivalent table to know the differences. For example, Floyd row here is row plus row. Uh, the tab the tab panel body is here now content content. We'll talk more about the differences when we go through the more in deep, into the details of UI uh, stuff. But yeah, the uh, this daily naming convention that changed is very effective. Uh, uh, as a user uh, of Byshiny, I really get to know the effects or effects based on this naming conventions, uh, new naming. So after I go back to the R now and see that uh, the, the original naming, I will I say that they got they done a good job uh, renaming them. Um, but yeah, um, okay. So I think for some reason, uh, RStudio is not run yet, but I will say something. So in the next session, we, I think Derek Wright will present. Yes, I am. Sure, so awesome. Uh, I think it's a use case. So we have like, uh, we'll discuss a, a, a detailed use case. I didn't read the chapter yet, but I, I think that's it. Um, so we'll build like um a really full app with based on a use case. Um, I will say that um, I think this should be de demonstrated with uh with R Studio. Uh, I will try also uh to have to come up with the same app or use case for Shiny, or for Python, um, and uh, discuss it with 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 you and the others uh, in the next session. I think this will be very helpful if one want to translate a full app from Shiny R uh, to Shiny Python or vice versa. Yeah, so, that would be yeah. excellent. Um, keep in touch about, about that. Sure. Could be a hand, like a contact with each other and plain it. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for for this. For this session uh thank you everyone for attending and thank you for um uh, for pairing up with